Jesus Alzamirano Ramirez, better known by his friends as Seuss, was a handyman and later, spoilers for a show that ended in 2016, owner of the Mystery Shack, founded by Stanley Pines. He was a personal favorite of many viewers, including myself. There's no doubt that this hilarious dude was one of the most impactful characters in the story, not only a support to the heroes, but he also served as the question mark in the Zodiac that they attempted to use against Bill Cipher. He was such a large part of the series that it's hard to imagine it without him, but today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So find your favorite question mark shirt and grab some seed dudes because we're gonna see how a simple accidental action could have changed everything. What if Seuss never worked at the Mystery Shack? Like most what-ifs, this relies on a butterfly effect moment. According to Chaos Theory, a butterfly effect in simple terms is the idea that one very small action taken can cascade into a much larger effect, such as a single out-of-place beat of a butterfly's wings. Most of us have heard of this generally due to stories involving time travel, wherein a single action, or even merely the existence of a person in the past where they were not, causes a separate timeline or future to form, generally for the worst. Gravity Falls is no different, except that the future that was created was actually a good one. I'm sure most of you remember the episode Blendin's Game, where Blendin Blendin is on the run from the Time Paradox Avoidance Enforcement Squadron, or T-Pays, because none of us have the time for me to keep saying that whole thing. Of course, he was on the run due to Mabel and Dipper Pines in an earlier episode where they use his device to go back in time for frivolous reasons. He declares a globnar to settle the score over this. An early Rick and Mortyism from Justin Roiland, I presume. Meanwhile, Mabel and Dipper learn it's Seuss's birthday and try to throw a party, only to realize that he hates birthday parties because it was when he realized that his father wasn't coming back to him. Mabel and Dipper end up apprehended by the T-Pays, but due to quick thinking, manage to steal another time travel device, go back in time, and manage to see Seuss's last celebrated birthday. In the end, they submit to the Globnar and beat Blendin, and give their free wish to Seuss, who uses it to heal them and then get a never-ending slice of pizza. Seuss is a genius like that sometimes. For many of us, this was a heartwarming episode where we're shown the merits of found family. However, one detail was very important. When Mabel and Dipper get stranded in the past on Seuss's birthday, Dipper tries to use a screwdriver to fix the time machine. A screwdriver which he drops on the ground. Seuss later finds it, notices it's from the Mystery Shack, and decides to take it back, where Stan basically forces the job on him after firing soon-to-be Deputy Durland. And therein lies the butterfly effect. It was something that was never supposed to happen, but because of one accidental dropping of a screwdriver in the past, the future was changed to the series we currently know. But what would have happened if Dipper's grip had been a little tighter? What if he never dropped that screwdriver? What sort of future would have occurred? The first time we see Seuss in the series is in the first episode, Tourist Trapped, where Dipper asks him his advice when he thinks that Mabel's new boyfriend may be a zombie. Actually, gnomes, but Dipper was but a fresh-faced young lad who knew not the ins and outs of Gravity Falls. Seuss recounts his beliefs of the mailman being a werewolf and tells Dipper that unless he has proof, people are gonna think he's crazy. This isn't a super big moment, as I doubt anything would have changed, but the next time we see him is in Legend of the Gobblewonker, where he helps them search for the legendary lake monster. Without Seuss, Mabel and Dipper likely wouldn't have had the chance to find this beast because Seuss provided the boat, and without Seuss, even if they made it to the island, unless Old Man McGucket was able to hold himself back, they probably would have died, so, you know, end of series. In the episode Fight Fighters, he's a big help supporting Dipper's courage when having to face Robbie and later Rumble McSkirmish, even trying to help him by depleting Rumble's HP. Didn't work, but you know, was worth a shot. And in the episode Little Dipper, he's the one who instigates Dipper's self-consciousness about his size due to measuring him and Mabel. This leads Dipper to search for a stone that when depending on how light passes through it can make something larger or smaller. Without Seuss, Dipper would never have gone after that stone, which in a way would have eliminated the issue for the episode, which most would agree is probably a good thing, but like we've talked about with butterfly effects, there would be ramifications for this in the future. The next time Seuss had a major role is in the episode Summerween. He was the one who warned them about the Summerween trickster who eats people that don't possess the Summerween spirit. Dipper doesn't believe him, which later leads to him getting targeted by the trickster. If it hadn't been for Seuss crashing into the trickster with his truck, Mabel and Dipper might have been eaten, which might not have been bad as it sounds since Seuss actually did get eaten along with Gorney, both of whom survived by merely eating the candy that makes up the trickster's body, but it would have been a way harder battle for Dipper and Mabel, and due to the fear of the trickster as well as its own threats, it's possible that you can only survive the trickster if you get out fast enough. I mean, we don't know if it can digest people or not, but let's give it the benefit of the doubt and say Mabel and Dipper could have survived. One of the biggest things that Seuss has ever done for the twins was in Land Before Swine, in which he shows some intelligence by helping the family escape a pterodactyl by walking in its blind spot, which actually allows them to survive. Without Seuss in this moment here, the twins could easily have been devoured by the pterodactyl and, you know, end of series. 
Seuss also follows the twins into the dreamscape to protect Stan from the influence of Bill Cipher. He helps them fight against Bill, and then when Gideon takes over the Mystery Shack by stealing the deed in the next episode, Seuss offers Stan and the twins to come and live with him and his abuelita at their home, which is one of the things that allowed Stan to keep the twins as long as he had. Without a place to stay, he would have had to send the twins away earlier before Gideon realized that he didn't have all the journals, which, you know, would have been a very early end to the series right there, a very different ending entirely with different consequences. But let's table that scenario and say that in some dimension without Seuss, Gideon actually chases them down before they leave town and is defeated just as occurred in the actual series. His next major appearance is in the second episode of the second season, Into the Bunker, where he's standing right next to one of the switches that allowed everyone to escape. Had he not been there, someone else would have had to race to push the button, and that wouldn't have left enough time to escape, as even with Seuss there, Dipper barely got out. It seems more likely that Dipper would have actually been crushed to death here end of series. It was also Seuss who found the author's briefcase, as well as pulled on the valve that was used to spray the area with water, knocking back the shapeshifter that was ready to kill Dipper and Mabel again. Seuss is also the one who repaired the laptop for use in the episode Sock Opera, and without him, the episode Seuss and the Real Girl obviously never would have happened, and the digitally end era Giffany would still be waiting to prey on some other vulnerable dude. Someone desperately lonely, maybe someone who does voiceovers for a YouTube channel. He was also a key member that allowed the twins to escape the Society of the Blind Eye by fighting against them with a case of... dysentery. In the episode Not What He Seems, Seuss keeps Stan from reaching Mabel when she contemplates shutting the portal down. If he hadn't stopped Stan, Stan might have forced Mabel's hand, which would have caused her to close the portal while Stanford was still on the other side. Without Stanford, obviously a lot would have changed. Stan would be in prison, and Dipper and Mabel would have been sent back to their parents' house. But it's also true that she might not have touched it. She might still have trusted Stan, despite the alternate course of events. He also almost becomes the mayor when Mabel and Dipper use the mind control tie on him in the Stanchurian Candidate, and in the events of Weird Mageddon, he helps a lot of people to the point that he might be considered a folk hero. Knowing Seuss, that might be an exaggeration, but it's very likely that he did help a lot of people because that's what Seuss does. In the next episode, he helps Wendy and Dipper raid Mabel's tower in her reality bubble. He also aids McGucket in rebuilding the Mystery Shack into a proper mech via instruction through the ways of anime. He's counted as one of the Zodiac that would have defeated Bill if Stanley and Stanford had set aside their sibling rivalry. And finally, he takes over the Mystery Shack when Stan and Ford set out on their adventures. If Seuss hadn't been there, so much wouldn't have happened. It's likely Mabel and Dipper wouldn't have even been there for Weird Mageddon, which would have resulted in Ford having to give his body over to Bill and the universal conquest of the Dream Demon. Though without Dipper or Mabel, there's also a very good chance Weird Mageddon wouldn't have even happened in the first place, but you know, that's less fun to think about. If Seuss hadn't made an observation about Dipper and Mabel's size, they wouldn't have had the size-changing flashlight, which allowed them to escape Bill's cage. If Seuss hadn't been there, Mabel and Dipper at worst would have been dead several times over. At best, they would have survived to Weird Mageddon only to be tortured by Bill until Ford gave him the knowledge to take over the universe, at which point Bill might have just killed everyone anyway because that's how he is. Either way, without Seuss, Bill would have been released onto the world and ended everything. Not because Seuss particularly had any massive role in the fight against him, but because of that little thing called the butterfly effect. Seuss didn't actually defeat Bill personally, but it was because of tiny things he did in the past that not only propelled Dipper and Mabel to this spot in the future, but it was also his hijinks that gave them the experience and tools required to defeat Bill. Seuss is the embodiment of the butterfly effect in Gravity Falls. He exists in the story through a butterfly effect, and he supports the heroes in the end via that same effect. He saved their lives multiple times, displayed times of wisdom that helped Dipper and Mabel grow, and helped change tiny details which created big waves. There absolutely should be folk songs written about Seuss because he deserves them, and without him, Gravity Falls' ending would have been way darker. What do you think? Did you enjoy our look into the nexus of butterflies we call Seuss? How do you think the story would have turned out if Seuss had never been hired? Would his father have returned and given Seuss that game of catch? Would he just be working at Gideon's Tent of Telepathy instead? Or do you think Seuss would have ended up at the Mystery Shack anyway? Leave a comment below and give the video a like. If you haven't already, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when new videos drop. Peace out, dudes, and remember, Frederator loves you.